r slash ask credit autistic people of reddit what do you wish more people knew about autism a lot of people with autism show no outward signs of it one of your friends co-workers etc could be autistic and you'd never notice anything strange about them maybe they're a bit shy or awkward in certain settings in my case group conversations but nothing major for those people autism isn't necessarily a disability as such there would be no reason to treat them any differently than others even when you do find out they are on the spectrum. As a general rule of thumb, don't assume anything about an autistic person. Find out what they're like and respond appropriately, don't assume they have the same strengths slash struggles as your autistic nephew or an autistic celebrity or whatever. I once heard if you've met one autistic person, then you met one autistic person. I think that summarizes that perfectly. None of us are the same. That's what makes it a spectrum. There are some people who I've known for 20 years that didn't believe me when they found out I was autistic. There are other people who have given me the, holy shit everything makes so much more sense now. Comment when they found out. Other people have asked me pretty quickly. To some people it's obvious. To some people their perception of what an autistic person seems like is skewed by TV and movies or generalizations. And some people you can know them their entire lives and never have any idea. One easy way to tell I am, is that when I'm passionate about something. I use way too many words to say simple things like, all autistic people are different. You know, like I did with this comment. While other autistic people may say the simple thing and leave you wondering. In a professional setting I am excellent. I can do group meetings, talk with the VP like I can with a coworker, do projects, get shit done on time, excellent. Professionalism is my best mask. However, with anything personal, complete shutdown. Thoughts like oh god what the fuck do I say? I have no idea how to answer people. I know what they want, I'm very good at inferring and reading people, but it always feels like answering them, to give them a response they will always like, is disingenuous. At the same time I don't want to be rude, especially if I just met the person. Even if they don't know I'm just answering with what they're looking for, it still feels rude to me. So basically, I answer like a fucking calculator. I know what they want so I answer accordingly. I can't answer from the heart. I just can't do it. It feels, somehow, physically wrong and unbearably embarrassing. I know it gets better with practice, but even that is hard. All my responses are learned, again, based on what people expect. I don't have natural reactions of my own, because my natural reaction would be to ask questions, but the usual correct response would be to make a joke or have a comment of your own or something. Normally I don't say anything unless I have something to say, and I rarely ever do. It's a very concentrated effort to come up with an execute banter at the same time. To bring it full circle though, I don't show outward signs besides being quiet and weird, but to not appear like that requires supreme effort. Socializing is so difficult and draining, there is not a moment I can relax or I'll just act weird again. That most of us aren't the weirdos and incapacitated mumblers you usually think. And since it's a spectrum, I can only talk about myself since it's so different for every single other artist. In fact, I am like really close to being considered normal, medically called neurotypical, which will be further addressed as NTs, but I do falter in my social interaction skills. Your basic ability to get subtle hints for okay I'm going to leave the conversation or I really don't know what you're talking about nor do I care is my downfall, I really have to try hard to get these intricacies. It gets exhausting, and when I fail at it, I feel like crap. Oh ye, also I feel emotions at like 11 times the strength as NT peoples. So I feel anxiety way harder than a NT. Like I barely make the first move or approach someone because to me, I think I'd look super desperate and creepy. But there are plus sides, I do have a one-tracked mind for sure, so I can use that to cut the crap and get exactly what needs to be done finished. So then when I want to write music, I can just shoot music out my brain, I am learning drums, bass, and guitar, so I can write all of those. I just wish people knew slash didn't think of autism as a disability. It's an effect sure, but not a disability completely. I try and change their perception by telling people I'm autistic, Asperger syndrome, after a while in passing jokes. So they can see the funny in this effect. FFS my real name on PSN is Gran Autismo Sport. I knew a guy who went to my college for a couple of years with Asperger's, who really liked rocks. He would occasionally approach me and start talking about them and I'd listen sometimes when I didn't need to go somewhere because I could see just how happy they made him. But I also witnessed many times where people were unnecessarily mean to him. There were some people that thought of him as a novelty and would feign friendship and feed him alcohol, just because they thought it was funny when he was drunk. 
Looking back, I wish I would have done more to help him out and stop them. I remember one day before he left I went to the gym for a run and all the treadmills were taken, so I went to the indoor track that was hardly used. About 10 minutes into my run, he comes in with his mom and goes into the middle of the track with her. He starts showing her these various sword fighting techniques that he had learned because apparently he was really into that too. Then he notices me as I'm doing a lap and eagerly waves. I wave back and he motions me to come. So, I took out my earbuds and jogged over. He introduced me to his mom as his friend. I could tell it made her really happy to that he had a friend and he was really happy too. I had only briefly talked to him a few times, but I did my best to be as friendly as I could be. After a few minutes, I excused myself, saying that I had to get going, so I left. That was pretty much the last time I saw him because he left school shortly after. He was a really nice guy that most people just misunderstood and looking back I wish I had tried to get to know him better. Sorry for rambling, what you said just reminded me of him and his love of rocks. We're not emotionless drones. If anything, we feel more emotion than the average person. Depending on the person, that will be shown more or less. Autism is a spectrum disorder and can be different for everyone. I'm fine with the internet generalizing this, I do it often too. Some people might not be fine with it, and that's okay. Acceptance is what we really want. A lot of non-autistic people are glad they were not diagnosed with it. As an autistic person, it really isn't that bad. In my earlier years of life, I was obsessed with certain things and pushed out the things I didn't like. I also tended to blurt out in kindergarten. When the teacher was teaching stuff like, 2 plus 2 is 4, I just started ranting about stuff. I was then helped by certain teachers and my parents and I changed very fast. I also wish more people knew that social interaction helps. People say that autistic kids have trouble with imagination, but don't. Difficulties with social imagination are a thing, but that does not translate into a lack of imagination generally. We are a creative bunch. Pattern thinking is one of my favorite things about being autistic, I see patterns and connections in everything and I use this to inform my creativity. I'm also surprised that some people think that being autistic means you are incapable of living. I am an honest person. Lies make me uncomfortable but I am good at spotting them when I am being lied to, even when the lie is outrageous. I don't like lying, it doesn't come naturally to me. Autistic people are generally honest and like clarity and communication. This can be seen negatively as blunt and rude, or positively as clear and honest, depending on your viewpoint. Social lies are something I have had to learn. When someone is asking if you like what they're wearing and it's too late to change, they are looking for affirmation, not a critique of their choice, though I'm unlikely to have strong feelings either way. Fashion is not my forte. Autistic people tend to be better at seeing things as they are, rather than seeing what we are socially expected to, and this comes down to the advantage of not processing social communication automatically. We don't soak things in unconsciously, we make a choice to engage or not. That female autism exists. It is so underdiagnosed because people born a girl are taught not to behave in ways that are abnormal but to the autistic mind are perfectly reasonable. The brainwashing tends to come back and cause issues in teenage years. I've told people hey I'm autistic and had people telling me that I can't be because I don't have a penis. Also, not all of us like numbers. I don't, well other than multiples of five and would much rather read a book to escape the chaos and irrationality of this world. This is also especially common in females with autism. Books allow a safe place to be, as they tend to be safe and have a structure. In books the characters have a set personalities and thus are easy to tell how they're going to react. Real people are nearly painfully complex. Another thing. Don't touch during a meltdown slash sensory overload. I can't respond. I can't tell who you are. You are a stranger. You scare me. I will do anything to stay safe and in control of my world. You do not belong in it right now. The only person who belongs in my world is me. Lastly, while entities, neurotypical people, or normal people, can spend a whole week around people and recharge during the time they spend at home, we can't. The world is a big and frankly terrifying place. We cannot handle it for as long times as anti folk can. We need time to recharge or we crash. Hard. And then a crash can take a long time to recover from. When an autistic person tells you that they can't even look at another person today, just let them be alone. They will thank you, or not, sometimes we just don't notice these things, later. I wish others would know that sudden outbursts of frustration in social situations shouldn't be taken personally. Often, it's a misunderstanding that results in getting neurologically stuck. Also, know that ASD kids may have a really strong sense of justice that doesn't always align with typical values. 
For example, if you hurt an insect in purpose, someone with Asperger's might have trouble seeing the difference between that and hurting another person, and may react accordingly. Though it may seem unlikely in the moment, misunderstanding related meltdowns can be resolved quickly with effective communication, which might require a trusted third party type to step in. It's amazing how often a huge outburst can return to laughing slash playing in less than a minute with the right approach. If the problem is related to a perceived injustice, a sincere apology can go a lot further than most would think. People need to understand that meltdowns are neurological responses to overwhelming stress and overstimulation. They have been compared to migraines. If an autistic person can recognize the signs before onset, it's possible to take steps to avoid them, but once they occur, they can't be stopped until they're over. Yelling at or arguing with the autistic person will only make the situation worse. Some people may not want to be touched during a meltdown. After it's over, the person is usually embarrassed and remorseful. The autistic person and those around him or her need to recognize what is happening and how to deal with it, or it will only get worse with time. As others have said, autism's a spectrum, so I'm only speaking for myself. Firstly, sensory issues are no freaking joke. If I ask you to stop blaring music, or to stop touching me, then I 100% mean that. Your fun and games I feel for hours after. For me. Sensory issues are my biggest thing. Secondly, after I make a mention about my autism, don't start infantilizing me. I promise I am by no means stupid or a baby. Right now, I speak three languages, and I can ice skate, and I have a high GPA. I'm. Not. Fucking. Stupid. See also, fuck you, special education teachers when I was in elementary school. Special interests literally calm me down when the social anxiety related to autism gets bad. I'm listening to this band or this artist or speaking in German to no one in particular because it makes this not in my stomach lesson. I'm not trying to be annoying. Also, please don't use the R word or special needs. It's gross and ableist, along with vaccines cause autism. I mask so much that I'm exhausted all the time. I hate how I and so many others feel like we have to conform and how it's been drilled into my head. I wish people would understand that being autistic does not mean we are stupid. It's very frustrating to be treated as a being of lesser intelligence just because we think and maybe act slightly different than someone without autism. It is highly annoying when people think that we are stupid and incapable of using logic and common sense. It's also difficult for a lot of us to read body language and understand tones of voice and facial expressions. I wish I didn't have to explain this as much as I do, it's very tiring. I wish people understood that people with autism still have a full range of emotions because we are human and emotions are hardwired. The misunderstandings and miscommunications come from how expressing and reading those emotions are happening very differently, which can lead to all sorts of shame, anxiety, and depression. Just because things are automatically understood for most people doesn't mean I can't understand them it is just different for me. The biggest thing for me is that while my bluntness started out in me being more of an asshole, the kindness and understanding of family, friends, and lots of reading taught me how to be myself without being hurtful. I am still honest to a fault and a bad liar, I know how to take other people's emotions into account I'm just using my brain a bit differently to get there, and it wasn't something I automatically picked up through social cues in childhood. Autistic kids grow into autistic adults. Just because we get better at not showing out autism doesn't mean we've grown out of it, as many people think. It just means we've been forced to hide part of ourselves to fit in and oftentimes it comes at the cost of being able to fulfill all of our needs, or hell, even just being ourselves. Something I wish my teachers knew when I was growing up, me avoiding eye contact doesn't mean I did whatever they accused me of, nor does it mean I don't feel sorry, and it's certainly not meant to be disrespectful. It's just that I don't do well with eye contact. Also, I know my social skills aren't the best, and I do try to work on them. But not telling me when I do something wrong and thinking the mere fact you're upset with me should lead me to realize what I did wrong and how to do it better instead of just telling me isn't fucking helping.